what's being done to us or tried on us at least isn't working and it isn't working and won't work because what we're being pushed to accept as the new world makes no sense. The supposed utopia we're being promised or rather having rammed down our throats is one in which there is no universal truth, no absolute and trusted truth, but only personal truth that trumps all else. There are to be no facts like those observed by biologists, just as a for instance, and only feelings based on personal preferences that change from day to day. It will be a world in which we might have no inalienable rights, rights we're born with, just permissions granted one by one by the state, and then only if we do as we are told and do without cars and warm homes and eat our bugs and fake meat and take our medicine on demand. It's a world in which two plus two might equal five if some faceless, unelected bureaucrat says it does. And if any of us says no, two and two always and only equals four, then our bank accounts won't give us any money until we accept our arithmetical and moral error. It's a world that makes no sense and that will not work, not for the likes of you and me. It will benefit the few, but it won't work for the billions. In the world of before, some of us had tried to learn to treat our fellow citizens as equals and to judge them only by the content of their characters. In the new world, we are to be born stamped and cursed with the sins of our ancestors or burdened with the yoke of oppression that was born on the shoulders of those that went before. And above all else, we are absolutely to judge and be judged by the colour of our skins. This judging of a person by the colour of his or her skin is a glaring example of an idea that makes no sense and does not work. The trail to the new world is being blazed by those who call themselves progressive. Among much else, progressives say they hate racism and that it is the duty of all of us to be actively anti-racist. Progressives say we must teach our youngest about white privilege, introduce critical race theory to the classroom. But as soon as the US Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade and put the individual states of America in control of laws on abortion, the progressive racist knives on the left were out for a black judge named Clarence Thomas, one of the majority that struck down the 1973 ruling. Thomas, only the second African-American person to sit on the Supreme Court and having occupied a place there since 1991, is in the eyes of many who count themselves progressive, evidently the wrong sort of black man. As a black African-American, he ought, the progressives thought, to have belonged to them and so done their bidding promptly and without hesitation. Justice Clarence Thomas, however, had his own mind and made his own decision, which was not the one they wanted him to make. All at once, the N-word was back and being thrown in his face. On social media, he was described, among other things, as just another dumb field. I'll leave you to fill in the blank, starting with the letter N. He was also called a slave, again with the N-word as a prefix. An N-word slave to his white wife, who was called a nutcase, just for good measure. We might just cut to the chase and say Justice Clarence Thomas was called everything under the sun by the progressive, pro-choice, pro-abortion side of the debate. Racism is one of the oldest sins of humankind. The N-word might be the ugliest name a human can call another human. In 20th century America, the Ku Klux Klan hid their faces within white pointed hoods. In 21st century America, it turns out progressive politics provide the necessary cover for naked racism. Aside from feelings and opinions about abortion, deeply and passionately held, Aside from the unforgivable return of one of the most offensive words in any language and a slew of other racist insults too many to list, this behaviour by self-proclaimed progressives makes no sense, not least because it is simply inconsistent. It's also hypocrisy of the most obvious sort. Let's remember these are people who say they hate racism and racists. And yet the moment a man, a black African-American man, did something they didn't like, which is to say step out of line, the vilest manifestation of racist thinking was an instant, easy, comfortable fit in some of their mouths. When President Joe Biden felt he had to respond to news of black people thinking about voting for Donald Trump at the last election, he said of them, you ain't black. It seems that in the minds of so-called progressives from the White House on down, black Americans are to be seen and treated as a monolithic block that could and should be counted on to vote as one, 
specifically the Democrat leftist woke right way, in those progressive minds, any black people who do otherwise, who break step with the herd, must have something wrong with them. If thinking that all members of a racial group can be counted on to think and act as one isn't racist to the core, then I don't know what is to be described as racist. Many of those same racists who pilloried a black man for thinking and acting as he saw fit were also among those demanding bodily autonomy for women in the context of abortion. Where were they when women and men were losing their jobs for refusing the COVID-19 injections? Where were they when world leaders like Justin Trudeau, Emmanuel Macron, Jacinda Ardern and many others went out of their way to make life unbearable, unlivable for those millions who already understood bodily autonomy and had the courage to make it real by standing up straight and saying no to an unwanted medical procedure and damn the consequences? Where were those bodily autonomy demanding progressives then? It doesn't make sense, this proposed new world this new world of say one thing and do another, where racists are evil incarnate until a black man thinks for himself and then, quick as a flash, the progressives sound like they're looking for the bedsheets and the burning crosses. Racism from the progressives might be the most egregious example of the new world making no sense, but it's hardly alone. World leaders in the West, for what they're worth, which is absolutely nothing, are reciting from a hymn sheet, singing in perfect harmony about a world made green by ending fossil fuels. Footage emerged this week of Canada's Prime Minister, Blackface Trudeau, and our own Boris Johnson laughing together at the G7 about who had arrived on the smallest jet plane. They were laughing about their uninterrupted use of jet planes because to them the very subject is a joke. It's a joke because for them nothing will change, while for us, the peasants, everything must change. Leaders like Trudeau and Johnson find the advent of this new reality very funny indeed because it's another opportunity to laugh at us, us everyday folk, fearful about feeding our families, heating our homes, ever-rising inflation, that sort of thing. The nonsense, or rather the absolute absence of sense, trickles down from on high and puddles around the feet of the gullible and the hypocrites. The Glastonbury Music Festival was the return of the annual pilgrimage of the woke and worthy, fittingly enough at Worthy Farm of all places, it's the gathering all in one place of the hundreds of thousands who think they know best and are ready and able to part with hundreds of thousands of pounds, hundreds of pounds, just to get beyond the high fences and onto the holy ground. Talk about no borders. When it was all over, they left in their woke wake uncountable tons of rubbish, single-use plastic among it, scattered across the fields so that the farmland looked like a pop-up landfill site. Best of all, the organisers had provided chargers for electric cars. The initial price to top up a virtue vehicle was £80, dropped to a bargain low of £50 after complaints. But wait, the chargers were powered by diesel generators. There at the heart of the High Church of Woke was the very lifeblood of Satan himself, filthy old diesel. A statement on behalf of the festival even said that using the farm's own diesel power had been deemed less harmful, less harmful to the environment than installing a Tesla supercharger. On and on it goes, the litany of the nonsensical. We're told to fear overpopulation when reproduction rates throughout the West are way below the level needed even to sustain present numbers. All across the globe, from the US to Spain, to here in the UK, to Singapore and to Japan, population numbers are set to fall off a cliff. Who will work to earn the taxes? Who will take care of the elderly? Countless questions and not enough people demanding answers. It makes no sense. At a time in history when we have the technology and the ability to feed all 7 billion people on the planet and more besides, we have global food shortages, the promise of famines in the third world. We have a fuel crisis while coal, gas and oil lie untapped under the lands of the West and while nuclear power remains pariah in the minds of those who would rather the poor got poorer, the hungry got hungrier and the cold got colder. Boris Johnson and Joe Biden find yet more billions of pounds to send to Ukraine and won't lift a finger to do anything meaningful to help their own people face the advent of crisis and hardship. It makes no sense. It makes no sense because, and here's the hardest pill to swallow, it's not supposed to make sense. This is planned. This is on purpose. It's supposed to make us do what we're told. It's supposed to make us stop asking impertinent questions and just submit to the man. It's supposed to divide us one from another until everyone feels alone. It's supposed to make us scared, angry, cold, hungry and sick to death. 